now available from Polygram Video. NFL's Feel the Power puts you in the middle of the action and unveils the hidden power of the NFL's elite. The NFL's Greatest Games delivers the play-by-play -play power of resilience in two volumes, the Ice Bowl and Super Bowl III. With NFL's Greatest Moments, you'll catch the most powerful images of pro football. Throws his pass, caught by Clark! It's caught out of the air by Frank O'Hare! Coach Shula has won number 325. Experience the power of laughter with NFL <laughs> talking Follies. Okay, throw a fake ball and keep the real ball in your shirt. You can't use more than one ball. Mom! NFL Throwbacks brings you the power of tradition and links future stars with heroes from the past. Lock and load, baby! Lock and load! Collect your favorite teams and witness the power of teamwork with the NFL official video yearbooks. Collect them all and feel the power of NFL films on home video. New Edge Pro Gel, official sponsor of NFL Team Highlight Films. Edge Pro Gel will give you a shave so comfortable that no other gel or foam can beat it. For a great, comfortable shave every day, try New Edge Pro Gel. Save your skin. Nineteen ninety six marked a year in which the Houston Oilers appeared ready to make good on the bright promise they had shown in their turnaround season of nineteen ninety five. That's the man over there, fifty five. He'll get you hyped. He'll get you hyped. So I house baby house of pain all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One, two, three, 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 Houston improved to eight and eight, but the season was a roller coaster ride of emotion. At times, they would simply dominate their opponents, but on several occasions, they fell victim to heartbreaking last-second defeats. It will be from 29 yards, and it's on the way, and it is good, and the ball game is over. Despite such heartache, the Oilers never lost faith. We believe. You got to believe, baby. You got to believe. Houston converted the doubters into true believers. And what a terrific job by Eddie George. This guy is not just a flash in the pan, folks. He is legitimate. Get to the QB, strip the ball. Something special is going to happen to you guys. Let's go. It's jumbo. We're gonna, we don't want him to see it. Throughout the year, Houston punished their opponents with an intimidating defense and an explosive young offense. Steve McNair looks around, play action, sets up, wants to throw, fires to the left sideline and is complete to Chris Sanders. Chris squeezes the ball, gets by everybody on the sideline. It's a good race. Chris Sanders to the 20, 15, 10, 5. 65 yards, Chris Sanders from Steve McNair. Oh, yeah, baby. Houston's commitment to build a competitive and contending franchise was achieved by a team with an abundance of young talent and a formula for success. During the offseason, general manager Floyd Reese and head coach Jeff Fisher continued planning their formula for success. Their primary concern was improving their offense. We needed to s surround our quarterback, Chris Chandler, with people that could do things with the ball. Uh, we needed to add speed to the wide receiver position. We acquired Willie Davis through free agency. Uh, Chris Sanders, the rookie last year, really improved through our offseason. A very, very important aspect of, uh, of pro offense is third down, be able to convert third downs. We went out and got who we felt was maybe the best third down back to ever play the game, and that's being Ronnie Harmon. of having uh, depth at the running back position, a workhorse, a guy that can handle the, you know, the, uh, the 16 game season was also something that we had to address and that's why we drafted Eddie George. Eddie George's coming out party came against Jacksonville in week two. Oh, here's Eddie George, he breaks two tackles, comes to the left side of the 10, 15, cuts it down to the 20, 25, 30, 80, 35, 40, Eddie George, midfield. Number 
27 immediately established himself as an offensive catalyst by running for 143 yards and scoring his first professional touchdown. Another offseason acquisition, wide receiver Willie Davis scored on an 11-yard pass and ignited an offensive explosion. Throws to his left, Taylor being crushed to his left, stops and fires wide over to his right, Floyd open at the 20, 15, 10, touchdown! Wow! While the offense set the pace, Houston's defense sealed the victory. Now we'll drop, and we'll look, and we'll fire the ball deep over the middle, and it is intercepted! A week later in their matchup with the Baltimore Ravens, the Oilers again dominated on both sides of the ball. And Chandler drops. He wants to go to the end zone with it. And he's caught by Willie Davis. Touchdown! Running back Ronnie Harmon's touchdown proved Houston's new game plan was working to perfection. The Oilers' offensive frenzy was made possible by the defense, which harassed Vinny Testaverde all day, forcing three turnovers. Vinny drops back. Vinny throws the ball. And it's picked up at the 20 yard line, and it's Darren Lewis. Houston's opportunistic secondary was one of the NFL's best. This unit was led by cornerbacks Darrell Lewis, Chris Dishman, and Steve Jackson, along with Pro Bowl safety Blaine Bishop and number 31, Marcus Robertson. Houston's three interceptions helped the Oilers to a 29 to 13 victory, tying them with the Pittsburgh Steelers for first place in the AFC Central. The Oilers would travel next to Three Rivers Stadium to face their divisional rivals. The house, baby. This is our house. House of pain, baby. We really take it over, baby. Like it should be. From the opening kickoff, Houston pounded Pittsburgh with knockout punches. But the Steelers withstood the barrage and then retaliated by turning Oiler mistakes into points. Despite being plagued by costly turnovers, Coach Fisher refused to let his team quit. In the second half, the Oilers responded to Fisher's wishes and began their uphill climb. Yes! 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 Cornerback Darrell Lewis's clutch interception gave the Oilers hope. Field, the pass comes on the near side. Hey, Steve has it. He lost it. It's picked up by Darrell Lewis. Lewis going to take it down the right sideline. Darrell Lewis takes it in. Wow, we got a big change in this football game. Houston had battled back against the defending AFC champions, but in the end, their comeback fell short. It was a disappointing loss for the Oilers, a loss they would avenge in the coming weeks. Houston traveled to Cincinnati's Synergy Field in week five where the Oilers provided their own fireworks display, courtesy of running back Eddie George. And he'll take the handoff. Big hole up the middle to the 40. Outside 35, 30. They won't catch him. Eddie George down the left sideline. They won't catch him. 45-yard touchdown run, Eddie George. George's 152 yards rushing opened up the passing lanes for the Oilers' aerial attack. Chandler drops. Chandler floats the ball to the end zone. Whitecheck bobbled and caught. Touchdown, Frank Whitecheck. 
Houston's offensive outburst was complemented by the NFL's number two ranked run defense. Applying the pressure up front were number 78 Anthony Cook, number 96 Gary Walker, and number 92 Henry Ford. Trailing Cincinnati by seven points with under six minutes remaining in the game, Houston's special teams unit provided the spark the Oilers needed. The NFL's premier return man, number 21, Mel Gray, ran back Cincinnati's kickoff 88 yards, setting up a game-tying score. Chris Chandler's touchdown pass to Derek Russell sent the game into overtime where the Oilers' fate would rest on the foot of kicker Al Del Greco. Here in overtime, a 49-yarder trying to win the ball game. Good snap, ball down, Del Greco's kick has the distance, and it is good, the Oilers win! The Oilers win in overtime! Del Greco's field goal lifted the Oilers to a 30-27 come-from-behind victory. The most prolific kicker in Oiler history continued his assault on the record books in 96, either setting or extending eight team records. When Houston traveled to Atlanta in week six, the entire Matthews clan was present. Under the watchful eye of their father, Clay Sr., brothers Bruce and Clay would face each other for the last time. The Oilers offensive line of Matthews, Mark Stepnoski, Brad Hopkins, Kevin Donnelly, and Irv Eatman open huge holes for running back Eddie George. George battered his way through the Falcons, finishing with 109 yards rushing. And Chandler has plenty of time to step back and throw the ball deep to Sanders. Complete the 20 to the 10. Houston's big play receiver, number 81, Chris Sanders, provided the Oilers with a lead they would not relinquish. Quarterback Steve McNair stepped in for an injured Chris Chandler and promptly drove the Oilers to another score. And McNair in the backfield runs away from trouble to the 10, to the 5. He dives! In! Touchdown! He looked like Superman! He dove from the 5-yard line in! Touchdown, Steve McNair and the Oilers! The Oilers beat the Falcons 23 to 13 but the Matthews family was also a winner this day with over 500 games played between Bruce Clay and Clay senior the Matthews rank as the NFL's first family in number of games played after their victory over the Falcons Houston returned home for their long-awaited rematch with the Pittsburgh Steelers in a playoff type atmosphere, Houston watched as Pittsburgh once again jumped out to an early lead. Tom Zach drops. Tom Zach fires the ball over the middle. It is caught by one hand. Johnson to the order 40, 35, 30. He's on the run and he takes it in. Touchdown, Charles Johnson. The Oilers would settle down, and with the defense leading the way, they began to establish dominance by heating up the pocket and forcing turnovers. The defense had asserted itself. It was now time for the Oilers' offense to unleash its own attack. Chris Chandler's pump fake froze Steelers' all-pro cornerback Rod Woodson, leaving Willie Davis open down the sideline. Now steps back, now throws the ball to Willie Davis at the five, and Willie Davis is in! Touchdown, Oilers! Willie Davis from Chris Chandler! Clinging to a three-point lead, it became do-or-die time for the Oilers. Houston dug down deep and seized control of the game. Tom Zach drops back, looks right, has the ball stripped, goes down, and who's got it? Who's got it? The Oilers win!
Eddie George will get the call. He goes up the middle. He goes in. Eddie George from two yards out with 3.05 to play. And the Oilers have scored twice in a two-minute span over the dreaded Steelers. The Oilers have beaten the mighty Steelers for their third victory in a row. And now sat tied with Pittsburgh at five and two atop the AFC Central. The Oilers had their share of disappointments in 1996. Against San Francisco, Houston's aggressive defense kept the powerful 49ers in check. But three field goals from place kicker Al Del Greco, including an oiler record and career-long 56-yarder, were not enough as Houston came up one point short. And a week later in Seattle, disaster struck. Matthews to snap. Roby spots it. Del Greco's kick is blocked, and the Seahawks recover it. And they're running down the left sideline. This is going to be returned possibly for a touchdown. on the field I still don't believe it just happened I am absolutely stunned after suffering two difficult losses Houston traveled to New Orleans for a matchup with the Saints quarterback Chris Chandler threw three touchdown passes including this 42 yard toss to number 81 Chris Sanders Chandler to Sanders touchdown From a broken play to a touchdown worth 42 yards. Running back Ronnie Harmon exploded for his best game of the season, accounting for over half of the Oilers' total yards on offense. Coach Fisher called on an unlikely scoring threat, lineman Eric Norgard, to clinch the Oilers' victory. Chandler starts white check in motion, and then starts to roll left, and then throws in the end zone. Eric Norgard! <laughs> The following week, Houston took a moment to stop and honor one of their veteran leaders. Bruce Matthews has been an oiler for 14 seasons, which ties the longest active streak in the NFL. Against Miami, he became the Oilers' all-time leader in games played, breaking Elvin Bethea's mark of 210 games. In 96, he also set oiler records for consecutive games played and started. Bruce Matthews was also selected to the Pro Bowl for the ninth straight year. And after 14 seasons, he remains one of the NFL's premier linemen. In miserable weather conditions at the Meadowlands in week 13, Bruce Matthews and the offensive line steamrolled the Jets as the Oilers achieved season highs in points, touchdowns, and rushing yards. Houston's young guns keyed the Oilers' victory. Running back Eddie George rushed for 141 yards and scored two touchdowns. Quarterback Steve McNair threw two touchdown passes, including an 83-yard strike to wide receiver Chris Sanders. The ball down the left side, wide open to Sanders, midfield, it's a foot race now, Sanders to the 40, 30, 20, Running back Rodney Thomas started through the line for 24 yards, scoring the Oilers' fifth touchdown of the day. The Oilers moved to 7-6 and six and were still alive in the playoff hunt. But by week 17 against Baltimore, Houston's postseason fate had already been decided. Still, Houston went out and continued to play hard-nosed Oiler football. Running back Eddie George put the finishing touches on his sensational season. He finished just 82 yards short of breaking Earl Campbell's long-standing rookie rushing mark. Head coach Jeff Fisher encouraged his players to keep the pressure on, and his team responded. Steve McNair setting up in the pocket and lofting the ball to the end zone. It is caught! Oh, what a great reaching out catch by Willie Dix. The Oilers 
stifling defense continually hounded Baltimore quarterback Benny Testaverde, recording four sacks. The Oilers' secondary didn't bite at Baltimore's flea flicker attempt. Pro Bowl safety Blaine Bishop came down with the Oilers' second interception of the day. In his fourth start of the season, quarterback Steve McNair took center stage and efficiently converted Baltimore's turnovers into touchdowns. Stands in there, now going to run it. Steve to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Steve to the 5, cut to his right, and he dives in. Air McNair, touchdown. With their sixth road win, the Oilers closed out their season with a 24-21 victory. Building a championship team takes time and patience. For the last two seasons, the Houston Oilers have been assembling the building blocks needed to achieve their ultimate goal of winning a Super Bowl. Houston's future lies in a trio of budding young stars. Running back Eddie George, wide receiver Chris Sanders, and quarterback Steve McNair comprise the Oilers' triple threat on offense. For McNair, the waiting game is finally over. The Oilers' number one draft pick in 95 takes over the reins for Houston's offense next season. Air McNair is 4-2 in games he has started. With expectations high, the Oilers' coaching staff feels confident that Steve McNair's time has arrived. We feel that now is his time. I mean, he's, he, him playing is going to give us a chance to win. And now it's time uh, for Steve to step up. One of McNair's targets this season will be second-year sensation wide receiver Chris Sanders. Number 81 led the NFL in yards per catch in 95. And in 96, he once again found ways to slip by defenses, topping the AFC in yards per catch. No receiver proved to be more capable of making the big play than Chris Sanders. You know, I, I, I like to try to make the little plays into big plays. You know, if, uh, if I catch a five-yard hitch, I expect to take it the whole distance. You know, whenever, I want to, whenever I touch the ball, God willing that I, that I score. Offense on three. One, two, three. Offense. All right, rookie. The Oilers acquired a rare rookie leader with their first pick in the 1996 draft. Eddie George finished the season with 1,368 rushing yards and was named the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year. With his unique running style, George roared past defenders and floored would-be tacklers. I try to do a little bit of everything, you know, power, finesse, and trying to make people miss. You know, do a little bit of everything, try to become the complete back. He's a power back and he's elusive and he's quick too, but uh, if you stand in his way, <laughs> he'll run you over. His potent mixture of strength and speed was matched only by his determination to be the best. I'm still getting used to the game. I don't think I've had that with the way I feel. My best game is yet to come. While the future stars of the Oilers hope to build upon their accomplishments, they continue to conjure up memories of the team's proud past. Play action, looking, going to go across the middle for Burrow at the one-yard line, touchdown! Houston's performance in 96 suggests that this team is capable of even greater accomplishments in 1997. The Oilers have the talent and the tenacity to succeed. And with a winning attitude, Houston appears ready to reach new heights.
New Edge Pro Gel presents the Houston Oilers' ultimate performance of 1996. In Week 8, the Houston Oilers needed a win over divisional rival Pittsburgh for a share of the top spot in the AFC Central. Houston's defense stymied the Steelers, forcing two turnovers. Quarterback Chris Chandler's pump fake froze cornerback Rod Woodson, leaving Willie Davis open for a touchdown. Rookie running back Eddie George's touchdown sealed the Oilers' 23-13 victory.